Welcome back to Animator Artist Live. Today we're going to look at how to get better deformations in things like characters wrists and elbows in a long-standing feature of advanced skeleton called slider joints. Now I've only started using them recently but have found them so valuable they're really easy to set up and really effective. So I'm going to walk you through how to set up an arm to get nice deformations as we fold the arm in the bicep, the elbow and the crease of the arm. And then I'm going to show you how it saved me on a real client project getting good deformations on the glove in the wrist of a character. So let's have a look now. Hey, so I'm starting with a model of these arms, which I just ripped off a base mesh, um, just for the purposes of this tutorial, because all we want to see really is just the arms and the elbow that we're playing with. And I've imported um, a standard advanced skeleton biped rig here. You can see the full rig here. We don't need it all really. We only need the arms, but I'm just using it um, just as a template for this. Um, nothing is skinned yet, as you can see. If I move the elbow in, uh, nothing is actually uh, skinned or moving yet. We're going to use a skin cage in a, in, a, uh, in a moment. And I've also got x-ray joints on. So if I click this little button up here, you can see the joints through that. So you can either have a transparent material or you can work, say, put it on a layer and work in reference. Um, but I like to have it in full color and press this little button up here for x-ray joints. Okay, so um, now let's have a little look and uh, let's just check the deformation of just the standard um, skinning we get from using a cage. So if you go to your, open up your advanced skeleton menu, so you'll probably have that on your shelf here, mine's here. And then if you go down to the deformation and we're gonna use the option two, um, just like in my previous videos where we set up a skin cage, we're just gonna uh, take this a little bit further. So let's just create a skin cage now. It's gonna actually create it for the whole body, which is fine for now, because we've, um, you know, we don't need these leg joints, but it's, it's it's quick to do. So let's let let it run through and do its thing so we can see all the guide curves, all the um, green and the red curves. Okay, so it's gone through and it's created all the, it's created all the um, skin cage voice. You can see it's done all the legs and everything, like I said before. So now you can also go through here if you want, um, say, select, um, the, the 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 guide curve on the side, the green skin curve, and you can actually you know fit this more if you want it. Um, you know for the purposes of the chore, I don't need it. And then you can also just mirror that to the side. So say if you did make a change, you could do this, and then you could go say right to left, and it would copy over. Okay, so I'm just going to undo that. So now we've got our basic skin cage, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hide our um, mesh a moment, um, which is I've put this on a layer, so over on the arms, and I'm going to turn on a wireframe on shade so we can see um, how this is broken up. So wireframe on shaded would, would basically give us our polygon mesh, you see. So um, I want to see it for our actual skin cage. So let's just, um, let's rotate the, I'm going to go to my move tool and rotate tool. Uh, I'm going to press the E key to rotate and I'm going to rotate. And let's just see what we've got here at the elbow. And this is the area that we're going to be working on with these slider joints. As you can see, so the deformation um, isn't great. Um, it just gives us this spread out thing and it collapses in there. So let's let's actually apply this to our arm and just see what we get just by default. So let's bring back our arms. And now what we do is we select, I've got this reference, so I'll unreference that, select our geometry and just simply click the copy weights button here. And there you go, it will now copy the weights over and now over here it's given us our skin cluster. So now I'm just going to hide the skin cage uh, for now so we don't need to see it. And let's just check out what the deep uh, the deformation is like um, as default. So let's just hit the E key to rotate. And there you go, as you can see, this is sort of standard sort of um, skinning you get. So um, um, straight off the bat, uh, you know, the, the the inner elbow just just collapses in the 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 elbow tends to always go sort of rounded as it's quite stretched here okay it's the same as our if I turn on the um, skin cage back you can see it all working together and that is as expected okay so I'm going to go back out to um, our bind pose now and you can also just go um, right down to the bottom here you can go you go to build pose which is here and it'll go to the build pose or a really good way of working is open up your um, uh, advanced skeleton little click on little man icon here and open up your GUI it's just come up on my other monitor I'll just bring this over um, and just shrink this window down and you can go to pose reset it's exactly the same as using go to build pose okay so say if you're here you've made a pose you've done all this you've posed it up you can just go pose reset or same go to build pose okay so now let's go back in let's see what we can do about this um th this poor deformation we've got here so let me bring back the skin cage um let's see let me just hide the arms and then we're going to uh, bring back the skin cage I'll just click on that a little bit of a 
glitch there. Sometimes you get that with, uh, depends which graphics card you've got, etc. Um, and I'm just going to um, open up the arms as well, just so we've got them both. And now let's go to our menu and let's learn about these slider joints. So what are slider joints? Slider joints are sort of in-between joints that push and pull. It gives a skin sliding and um, the muscle sort of pushing in and out. So let's just take, click on the helper. As you know, in Mark Skeleton comes with helpers, so you can click on anything just to get a bit of information. Click on the little helper icon here and it comes up. So this creates slider joints. Slider joints are placed from the positions of the skin curves. So what you do is you first, you select any skin curve and then create slider. Okay, so if you want to, you know, there, there is um, a video link to the actual author's video there. Um, he made that ages ago, but it's still a really good video. So um, let's just go through this now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I am going to um, select our skin curve here and go to create slider joints. Now, we're going to see something wrong with this in a second. Let me just hide the skin geometry and we're going to go um, create slider. And as you can see, it's created a slider here. But what we haven't done is we have not turned on our red skin curves. Now, this is off by default. So let's turn these on. And you'll notice that they're all spread out. So they're exactly in line with the um, deformation of the skin cage. OK, so this is where um, we have missed a step out. I wanted to show you this just so because this is what you'll face. So I'm going to just undo this and I'm going to undo the slider joints or you can just simply hit the delete. So now um we, we don't want the deformation to be spread out evenly here. What we want to do is we want to use the function deformation width first. Now, if I click on the helper icon, what this does is it moves the red skin curves. So it moves the red skin curves to the deformation width. And it's the, basically the average of the height and width of the geometry at any profile curve. So what that means is it's going to um, move our red skin curves into position so that we can be closer to where it deforms. So let's just run this. So what we've got to do is click this button here, deformation width, and you see it pop in. You see, now the actual skin cage deformation um, box has changed as well. So if we rotate this now, you can see it's it's sort of deforming a bit better around here. It's not that there, there would be no folding in the in in the middle. So now this gives us a better area where we can add our sliders and we can also add them to the red curves. So I'm going to hit my selection tool and I'm going to select. I'm just going to zoom in here. I'm going to select the red curve, the green curve, and the red curve, all three of them. And now I'm going to go create sliders. Click this button and you'll see what we get. Okay. And oh, I think I didn't select the inner joint there and uh, the inner green curve. So I'm going to just hit create. You can either do them separately or, or all together. It doesn't really matter. So now let's see what this has given us. As you can see, it's given us these extra joints here. So we've got six extra joints and let's just rotate this. And um, I'm just going to hit F to zoom in on it. So then I, when the camera moves around, it focuses on there. So I don't uh, tumble around the camera too much. Now watch this. Now when I rotate, look at that. So you can see how this is working already. What it's doing is this joint here is pushing the elbow out and this is pulling the skin sideways and inwards. And as you can see, even just in the in the in the skin cage, we're getting a lot better deformation. So let's go back to pose reset. Now let's bring back our arms and now let's rotate. And as you see, nothing has changed there. I'm going to hide the skin cage. Nothing has changed yet. That is because you, you it doesn't just work automatically. You have to copy the skin weights back again, okay? So you have to be in the bind pose to do this. So just go to pose, reset, select the arm just as you did before and just simply click copy weights and it's done, okay? Now let's have a look at the deformation. I'm gonna zoom in on the top and look at that. How nice is that? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go show none, show polygons so we can just see the arm just see how nice this is compared to what we had before i've still got the control selected look at that it's pushing the elbow out it's pulling the um the crease um in and forward and it's sliding the bicep muscle across and the forearm muscle so it's, it's sort of sliding the skin and this skin is sliding across this way Look at that. Even on the default settings, that is really nice. I don't even have the, um, I don't even have this smooth. So if I select this, hit the three key to smooth. And now, um, obviously, I can't see my curves anymore. So I'm just going to go show uh, nerves curves. And I'm going to select this. I'm going to hide the skin curves. We don't need to see them at the moment. And now I'm going to rotate this. Look at that. 
right off the bat, really nice deformation. Let's go to the arm here. Okay. So now let's have a little look at the slider joints and how we can change them and perfect this even further. Class creatives have given me access to their top ranked character build animation and game courses to test for my audience. I was really impressed with the credibility of the tutors who are pros from the likes of Disney, Naughty Dog and Insomniac Games. Even for beginners, the courses are incredibly simple to follow at your own pace because they are all divided into manageable bite-sized pieces, but they all work together to make a comprehensive entire course. To top it off, class creatives have offered my viewers a massive 25% off all their masterclass courses. I'll leave the link and my special code in the description to receive this huge discount off the pro subscription. Any small commission will be put straight back into building this channel. Thank you. So let's bring back the joints and have a little look at what we can tweak on this. We're going to go show and then down to joints and there's our joints back. So each and every slider joint has its own um, editable value. So let's select this one here, the elbow joint. Now, if you go over to your, um, your channel box and you go down to slide, you can now click on this and you can change the value. Have a look at this. So if the elbow, so if you think the elbow is sort of sticking out too much, say you can sort of dial that back. So we've gone down to sort of 0.4. Let's, let's try 0.5, which is halfway. So let's have another look. Let's go back to one. And that was how it was with one. And I'm going to just rotate this. Now I'm going to select the joint and I'm going to change this to say 0.5 and it brings it in. Or let, let's just let's just go less. Let's just bring it in like this just so you see the difference. So you can really tweak these. OK, so you can say this one here. OK, I might want this to slide further across and you can tweak it. So you might say bring this across. You can then say this one here. This is this is like the crease one in, in, in size. So you've sort of got the most deformation here. You can really push and pull this around. You can say I want a bigger crease and bring this in. Um, the bicep, go and select this, change this, you might not want it to slide over. I mean, I like, quite like a nice tight crease there, but you might want to say slide it over to here. So as you can see, we've now completely sort of changed the deformation values by changing the, um, the actual slide channel box values for each one. And you can also, um, if you want to change the values all together, you can actually select multiple ones at the same time. So say if I select all of those, you can change these all at the same time. OK, so it's quite powerful. I'm just going to go back out to the default values and um, just show you something else with this. You can actually let's just put this back to one and let's just see what this is on. So it's on on one. You can now actually go in and, and skin these joints. OK, so um, let's see. You've got a bit of a crease, there, a bit of a tweak, which I, I, I think I've just pushed a bit too far. But let's just have a little look. So this one here, this is on one. So let's just select the arm and just um, tweak the actual weight the painting. So if we go up to um, go to our rigging menu set, make sure you're on rigging, then go up to skin and then paint skin weights and option box, just like we've done in my other videos with the um, with the rigging with the advanced skeleton uh, uh, series. Um, you can do exactly the same here, even with the slider joints. So as you can see, I'm going to go you can go through all your different joints. But if you scroll down here, look at this, you've got your elbow and here are your slider joints. I'm going to hit the down arrow. OK, so we can paint either one of them. So let's go to, say, um, for example, um, let's go to this middle one here. And now I can say, OK, I might want to, say, click the add, give it some value and then paint more value here. It sort of affects around here more. OK, I'm going to hold down the B key to shrink or um, uh, increase the size of my brush. I mean, this isn't a, a weight painting tutorial. This is about slider joints, but it just gives you a little insight. So I might say, oh, I want this to affect a bit further up the arm. I want to bring this up. And you can do that. Or you might want to smooth out. So we hit the smooth key and then we might say flood this a few times, get, get smoother. Now let's go to our middle joint in there. This one might sort of benefit from, let's go to smooth here. I'm on the smooth and click flood, flood a few times and that smooths things out. Now let's select, say, the bicep one. Um, let's go to this one here. And there's quite a sharp crease there. So you might want to either flood and add smooth or you might want to sort of paint that by hand. Let's get in there and paint the smoothing. There you go. You can see it sort of slightly smoothing out. Or you might, again, go back here, change the size of the brush and say, I want, I want this um, to be affected a bit more over. I want the fall off to be a bit bigger. So we go to add and go down to sort of a mid value. This, this is your opacity. So if it's up full, you'll get a stronger one, a stronger um, effect and then your value. So somewhere in between is good. And then you can say lightly paint across. Look at that. And now I'm spreading the weight across here and then I might want to smooth it out. 
You see? So you can do what you want. I mean, obviously I've gone too far there. It looks a bit silly, but I'm just trying to demonstrate what you can do. Okay, so I'm going to undo that and go back out. Um, so there you go. So, you, you you know, you've got so much control. You can um, paint the weights, um, edit the sliders uh, values. I'm going to go back out. Um, you know, we've tweaked them a bit here. So let's just bend this um, again and just see what we've got. Now I'm going to hide everything again. I'm going to go hide um, the joints and I'm going to turn off wireframe or shaded just to see what we've got here now. Okay. So now the bicep, you can see the bicep, I've sort of ruined it a little bit there, but you might like that. You might like the bicep to slide across. We can actually paint the weights to affect more of the bicep. So it's not just rotate, it's not just affecting up to here. So for, say for example, I'm going to hit the Y key to go straight back into it. I'm going to scroll down to find our joints. There's our bicep joint. So I'm going to go to, let's say, um, uh, let's try the bicep one here. I'm going to add some more value here. Let's just see what that's like. There you go. I've pumped it back out again there. I've filled in the gap. Um, or you might want to say, let's go to replace, take this down to zero, and you might not want it to affect, so we take some off. Okay, you can, with you can, you know, like I say, it's not a, a weight painting tutorial, but you, but you get the idea. Okay, so you've got a lot of value. Let's go back out um, and rotate this again. Yeah, that's really nice. Nice deformation there. Let's go to a different angle so we can see the elbow. There you go. Just a side note here, if you've done any weight painting and you use the copy weights function back in the skin cage, you will lose your weighting. So if I were now, went back to our advanced skeleton menu and I went down to our um, copy weights. So if for some reason I added more slider joints and I wanted to copy the weights back, as soon as you hit that, you will lose your any any um, skin extra weighting you've done painting the weights because it's copying the weights back from the original skin cage. So that's just something to keep in mind. So you, what you would do is you have to sort of maybe if you wanted to add more slider joints later, you know, it's best to set them up in the beginning and plan it out first. Um, but you would um, need to sort of duplicate the arm, uh, maybe copy, um, copy the weights back over after you've added more slider joints or something like that. OK. So I really hope that sort of um, helps. Um, you know, and you could always, um, I'm not going to cover this in this job, but if you wanted to, you could always convert this to a um, corrective blend shape, which wouldn't be as good, but it, it would be less heavy on the rig. But I mean, it's only six extra joints anyway. Um, and um, in another video, I'm going to show you a, a different way where you get even more control with the with the sort of with the joint based corrective controllers. I'm going to save that for another video, a follow up video. Now, um, let's just finish up here. So the, these slider joints, they work really well for wrists. And I'm going to show you an actual client project in a minute and how I have it helped me um, with a, with a wrist of a, a, a of a glove project. Um, I've tried this on the knees, um, but it didn't work very well. So, you know, they don't work everywhere it, with the knees and the back of the legs. It's actually easier just to paint. Um, let me let me just um, I do have a body here somewhere. There we go. So we can go in here and, and it's actually much easier with the knees to just to just paint the creasing, paint the weights behind. It's not as involved um, as an arm, really, to be honest. So, um, yeah. I hope that really helps um, with a good introduction of slider joints. Give them a go. I'd love to see what you make. Um, and let me just finish up by just quickly showing you this um, client project and how it helped with the wrist. If you would like the actual Maya file with the rig and the arm, then you can help support the channel over on my Patreon page. Not only will you get this, you'll get lots of the other tutorial files like my After Effects files, Maya files, things like that. And we're going to be building a private Discord channel where you can chat to me, get advice and feedback on your work. Thank you. So this is a real client project of a character. It was just the glove that I needed to use for this particular project. And this has got the standard joints in it, no slider joints. And as you can see, let's have a look at the deformation. I've already painted a little bit of weights, but you get this horrible bendiness. Um, and, and from the top, you get you get this, you, it doesn't fold well. Um, even if you go in and paint more weights, you could get this obviously a lot better, um, but it would take quite a bit of work. So I needed to get the actual deformation. And this is when I actually added my um, slider joints. So this is the rig now with slider joints added. So let's check the deformation out and look at that. As you can see, so much better. The arm isn't folding. Um, it, it rotates really nicely. I've got some lovely creasing going on. It keeps the form. Even if I go sort of left to right, 
you can see that um, um, you know you, you do get this lovely um, angle in the in the wrist. The, the sort of the, it looks like the bones coming out there, but it looks looks great. It's it's just so much better and works so much better to animate as well. Uh, even you know the arm isn't folding in at all or anymore. So um, yeah, so as you can see, just adding simple slider joints helped, and I didn't even have to paint any weights on this one on the actual joints. I don't think um, I can show you the actual joints. Let's go to show and then joints and as you can see with these i only added one set so if i turn on the skin curves i only added them to this green curve let's just go to um, open up this and i'm going to reset the pose uh, pose reset back to normal so i actually only added the slider joints i didn't select um, like with the elbow i didn't select the red um, and the green I just simply selected the green curves and added the slider joints Okay, so let me just hide those so you can see it one more time. Turn off the joints, show uh, joints. Here you go. Go back to here. I'm just going to move this. And there you go. So um, just from doing that, and I didn't have to go through all the weight painting. Um, you know, you might need a little tweak here and there, but it's got so much better deformation. All thanks to those um, simple slider joints. Thank you. So there you go, I really hope that helped and you're now able to get better deformations in your character's elbows and wrists. In another video, I'm gonna go over another feature of Advanced Skeleton called Corrective Controls. It uses joint-based controls and it gives us even more variation. We can even scale the controls to get muscle growth and decrease. Now, if you've got value out of this video, I'd really appreciate a like. And as before, I'm gonna give away this project file to all patrons who do help support the channel. So as always, I really appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next one.